stream of the night. Um, as I'm sure you could probably tell, uh, Nick is not currently with us. He will not be doing uh, the PlayStation stream or the Nintendo stream with us, unfortunately. It's just not uh, co conducive with his schedule. And that's absolutely fine because you guys have me still for the last two shows. And I'm really excited. Um, you know, so far it has just been a phenomenal uh, start to, to E3, you know? Um, you know, even EA... They like. I don't think anybody's expectations were all that high, but they showcased a lot of things that were pretty cool. They talked about their involvement, their interest in creating a more inclusive gaming environment, things that matter a lot to me. Um, you know, then we had uh, Microsoft with an incredible, just amazing Xbox conference. Um, they talked about you know their acquisition of various studios and their efforts to kind of push more of that sort of first party uh, exclusivity and that sort of frame of thinking for their development further. I think that's really awesome of them to be taking that direction. Um, you know, in addition to that, uh, Bethesda had just a fantastic night. I, I still think uh, in hindsight that theirs might have been uh, the best one yet. Um, you know, the level of enthusiasm, and, and one thing that has been consistent year over year with Bethesda is that they always take the opportunity to express gratitude for the people that they work with on, the daily, on a daily basis. Um, it's a little bit hard, you know, I think a lot of the times the exposure that we have to games are uh, through the internet, and so a lot of what we see is either the one face associated with the game, perhaps a PR person, like, Hearthstone players out there, think about how many times you address Ben Brode specifically, even though he's not the only person on the, or, well, wasn't the only person on the dev team, he's not even on it anymore, which is sad. Uh, but, um, you know what I'm saying, like, a lot of the times the exposure we get to, to games is um, as extensive as what the developers are willing to give us, and so it's nice to see a company like Bethesda say, well, you know, yeah, people like Pete Hines and Todd Howard are going to be on stage, they're going to be the ones making the big announcements, but they don't want you to lose sight of the fact that it is um, yeah, not a one-man job. It's a team. It's a dedicated group of people who come in to work yeah, every day uh, because producing content that gamers care about is something that they legitimately want to do. Um, you know, and even though, obviously, I'm not developing games on a larger scale, even the exposure I had to independent game development while I was in college and... Um, you know, seeing the people around me, even in my local area, there are a couple of up-and-coming studios. Um, you know, I think that, that that level of enthusiasm is something that, it's palpable. And it's it's really, um, you, you can feel it when it's genuine, you know? Like, there's always that conversation of, oh, well, profit first. But uh, this is one of those mediums where you can tell, like, genuine, you know, excitement for the product, for the product's overall impact. Um, that tends to take center stage, perhaps with the exception of EA. Um, <laughs> but es essentially, um, you know, what I think we can kind of expect uh, going forward with tonight's stream uh, with PlayStation, you know, they are just incredible. You know, they have, actually, let me put my, my logo down here. Forgot to even have that going. Um, yeah, I think it's... Uh, just the, the expectations I have for them, you know, they've got a lot of really big first-party games, and sure, you know, a lot of people have been saying, like, oh, it's we're, we're only going to be focused on games that we've heard about already. And perhaps on the first-party front, that's the case, but a lot of the times we get exposure to certain third-party titles exclusively through Sony's presentation. Um, so, yes, it might be that we not, might not see anything new from them directly, um, but from other developers, we still might see some things that we haven't seen, or some things that we've seen a little bit of, uh, but are going to get a look at in greater detail. And I think that there is a lot of benefit to that as well. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I've addressed in my predictions video kind of what my wish list item was for a PlayStation conference. Um, if there were to be a, an infamous announcement today, that would likely be the last game I purchased for my PS4. Um, it's not necessarily a matter of you know, the, the, the console not having a very good library, it's just um, the more exposure I had to it, the less I really understood why that was my decision. Um, I mean, I put a lot of time in on exclusives, and I did log a lot of hours on some of the, the PS Plus games that I had. Um, 
you know, I, I have some fundamental disagreements with PS Plus as a service, especially um, some of you who might have followed my work on MMO Examiner know I, I was pretty vocal about the price increase of the subscriptions for uh, PlayStation Plus. I think what a service is already historically you know, prone to being shut down or uh, requiring extensive maintenance or uh, compromising people's credit card information, for instance, um, I would definitely say that that's uh, a time where we have to kind of take a look at whether or not it's even worth it to uh, invest money into this sort of product. Uh, it's funny, like, I, I, I currently, I still own my PlayStation, but I don't have a PlayStation Plus membership anymore because it, it eventually reached a point where the return on investment just was not substantial enough. Um, you know, there weren't enough online games that I was actively playing at the time, I guess. Uh, thankfully, certain online games like Elder Scrolls Online doesn't even require that you have that subscription. And then the free games that I was receiving every month were... Um, you know, a lot of it were was shovelware titles. Uh, a lot of it were, were, you know, ports of mobile games and, and things like that. And it's not to say that the indie stuff is inherently bad. And I don't think that that's really a reasonable stance to take either. Because there were a lot of games that were put on PlayStation Plus that were really solid. But were probably overlooked because they didn't have that AAA budget behind them. Uh, games like um, A Ruse Awakening or Fury or Skulls of the Shogun. Um, or even, you know, Super Meat Boy, like some of the older indies and stuff, you know, if you didn't have a chance when those games had initially come out, uh, to, to give them a shot, you know, that, um, that's something that, you know, is really beneficial for the PlayStation Plus games. Plus, um, plus, <laughs> PS Plus subscribers got, uh, they got access to Rocket League for free, um, and then... Also, there was the, um, goodness, I'm blanking. I know there, there were like some, some pretty decent discounts for a lot of the uh, anime weeb stuff. <laughs> uh, but, you know, overall, I, it was a service with its ups and downs. It just, uh, to me, the cost didn't really justify that. So it was something that I transitioned away from. Um, before anybody calls me out on being a, a hypocrite or whatever else, um, my mind's not made on Nintendo's online service either. That's something that I'm hoping we'll uh, get more details on tomorrow. I mean, in a sense, if I want to log hours into Smash Bros, it's probably going to end up being a necessity. <laughs> but um, I, I don't think that that necessarily has to be something that uh, I'm 100% locked in on. Uh, now, that being said... $20 a year and the Games Vault in addition is already just looking at it a better return on investment than the likes of, of what a PS Plus game is. And then also I feel like there's just kind of this more inherent forwardness when it comes to Nintendo's approach, even with, you know, looking at a paid service. Uh, whereas sometimes with, you know, Sony, things can be a little bit wishy-washy in nature. Now, I will say this much, also, um, looking again at the Nintendo online service, is that, um, you know, historically, when it comes to things that everybody else is already doing, Nintendo lags a little bit behind in that area. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, the guys can develop games like it's nobody's business. They probably are some of the, not probably, they definitely are some of the best developers out there still. You can say what you want about them putting out a new Mario Kart every year, but it's still going to be the best racing game on the market no matter what. Um, yeah, so, uh, but when it comes to production of the technology and quality of life, especially prior to the launch of the Switch, it was just not, not up to par. Um, you know, I, I think uh, there's been a lot of focus on that with the switch um so far with a wireless connection i haven't really run into any trouble even playing certain games online that of course is contingent on me being docked whenever i'm playing in handheld mode that's when i encounter um you know a lot of like lag and issues there so but that that also is going to eventually be a problem i imagine um, you know, especially when the main pull of the console is taking it anywhere and playing wherever you want, doing whatever. Uh, you know, I think there's um, uh, something left to be desired there. But this isn't about 
the Switch, I don't know why I've kind of went off on that tangent. This is about PlayStation and their next moves. And ideally, those next moves will not involve a new console. But we'll find out right now. Starting a little early there. Okay, so this is, um, oh, right, this is a... Weird stuff. Yep, we got about a minute before they're set to start. Um, as I was saying, I hope they don't do it, announce a, a new console. I know, um, at the Xbox briefing, they were saying that it's something that they're already looking into. And I had mentioned that iterative consoles combined with having consoles coming out every gen is not something that's going to be viable for very long. And so if this is the direction they choose to take going forward, um, I believe it was the CEO of Ubisoft who said that the next generation of consoles will be the last. That's a very real possibility because as they become more iterative, their inherent benefit begins to kind of waver. Once that benefit goes away, uh, it then becomes a circumstance of well, what's the what will you know? What are the kind of play interaction that's going to offer me some some sort of variance? Like, what's preventing me from just playing this on PC? Because cost wise, I mean, look look at the Xbox One X, right? It's roughly around the cost of building a decent gaming computer. Um, so, with that in mind, you know, it's eventually going to come down to are they I'm going to turn this down. It's so distracting. <laughs> um, but essentially it's going to come down to what are, what are the benefits of owning a console versus owning a PC when a PC is also a freaking computer, you know? Um, and I think that Nintendo's method is a viable one where, well, every time you... Well, first of all, there are the exclusives, which, let's be honest, can't really carry an entire console unless they're like plentiful um which seems to be becoming less and less of the case you know as the days go on i mean look at for the first time ever they just said it uh kingdom hearts 3 is going to be on xbox so you know we really don't know what we can expect uh going forward as far as you know certain exclusivity deals and whatnot but you don't want to hear me talk business you want to watch the sony media briefing which is starting right now it looks like Please kick it off with The Last of Us. Let me go ahead and add the chat in here. Good evening, everyone, and, and welcome. And thank you for making the time tonight to, uh, to come to church. <laughs> this, this fulfills your obligation for the coming Sunday, for those of you who need to know that. <laughs> um, but thank you. Thanks for coming out. Um, it's great to see the congregation as large as it is tonight under this single tent. Um, and for those of you who may be a bit apprehensive because you remember that movie Kingsman, this, 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 it doesn't end that way. <laughs> but again, thank you. Um, and as you can see from this evening, um, here again at PlayStation, we've decided to mix it up a little bit in the way that we're doing our E3 presentation this year. You know, we look at what the stories have we tell to tell and, and, and the things that we want to impart to our fans here with us and our fans uh, on the live feed worldwide. And that changes our design design ideas around what we can do for this show. So tonight, we're going to have, rather than a bombardment of new creative, we're going to take all of you uh, on a journey deeper into some of the key titles we've talked about before, but we're going to talk about them in a different way tonight, in a deeper way, mm -hmm. so you can learn about what's going on with these games and what's coming up in the future. 
you know, when we look at here um, at Worldwide Studios with Inside Sony Interactive Entertainment, we really want to take our love for gaming and make it sing, and make it sing very loudly. Um, it's a gaming industry, it's sometimes called, but certainly inside our studios, we see gaming as a vocation. It's a calling. It's what we do, it's what we have to do. Our teams of creatives and studios and designers, they have stories to tell and things they want to show you and places they'd like to take you. That's what we're trying to do here at PlayStation. Uh, this coming year is going to be all about those kind of games that we can deliver to you in a way that's going to blow your mind. And tonight, we're beginning here in this tent, we've, uh, this church tent we've created here uh, in Los Angeles to let you start that journey with us and let us tell you uh, our stories for the next hour or so. So without further ado, it is my great honor and my unique privilege to invite to the stage and introduce to you Gustavo Santorea. Trailer time? Woo! Getting right into it. There we go.
pressure down my control. Don't go here, don't go there. It's funny how involved you get whenever your schedule go out. Where's the big man, though? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I remember there was that trailer a couple months ago, probably closer to like a year ago at this point. Yeah, that's messed up.
I like that this very much appears to be, you know, Ellie's game. Because it seemed like the first one was kind of building towards that, toward, like, for its, you know, latter half, we'll say. Um, but I don't think there was a way to really do, like, the final sequences of that game without, or with, you know, having her at the forefront of it. So, now she gets to get hers, but I'd really like to know, you know, where Joel is. Girl's an animal. I'm also glad they're focusing more, it looks like, on the different factions of people and less on the whole, um, you know, mushroom situation. Though I'm sure that's obviously still going to be a, a factor of it. Excuse me? Did she just do like an explosive arrow?
launch date. So no release date though. No release window even. Give us a that season. Was a new look at The Last of Us Part Two. We're here live in Los Angeles at the PlayStation E3 showcase. We're taking a quick intermission while folks move uh, along to the next part of the experience. We'll have a little bit more to share on that later. And I am joined by my good friend Ryan Clements. Hello, Mr. Schumann. How are you? It's, I'm good. It's such a pleasure to be here at the PlayStation Showcase. Uh, and it's going to be a huge night for Worldwide Studios a little what? later when this resumes. <laughs> uh, and what better guest to have for joining us? Is this like a, so like a Disney ride? Mr. Sean Lane. <laughs> Hi, sir. Yeah, good to be here. I thought you were just on stage. How did you get up here so fast? We created this pneumatic tube that I was dropped into and it's shot right, right across from the studio here. Right over here. Well, it's yeah. good to have you here. Well, it's sir. great to be here. And I think that was a very, uh, um, a very powerful start for our E3 program for this year. That's right, there's much more to come, but I do want to zero in on The Last of Us Part Two yeah. here just for a moment. You know, as chairman of Worldwide Studios, you work very closely with Naughty Dog. These guys need no introduction. Indeed. And I'm curious, uh, from your perspective, where is their head at when it comes to developing this game? Well, where is their head at? I mean, they are, they are everywhere. They're looking at um, what can do in the next iteration of The Last of Us series. And I think what we saw tonight, I mean, that, that piece of, 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 of content was, was so impactful. I mean, the whole relationship between Ellie and Dina going into the combat sequence really shows that um, they're playing all the stuff with like Naughty Dog, and they're going to have a very broad and ranging game that's not going to make you only only work at it as a player, but you're going to have to just think as a person with what you're coming up against. And I can't wait to see more of that. That was first gameplay we saw there at the yeah. last of the two, looking obviously incredible. And speaking of incredible, I mean, worldwide studios lately, I mean, it's just been unbelievable. Horizon, they have God of War, which needs no introduction, and Detroit, Become Human. I mean, what is the secret, and what are you doing over there at Worldwide Studios? What's going on there? <laughs> the rule number one is do no harm, right? <laughs> right. A lot of ways, my job is just to move the boulders out of the road to make sure that creative talent can get where they need to go, you know, provide backup, provide scope, you know, provide generalized, you know, advice about where we can take this as a as, as an industry and, and, and as and as a as a, as a gaming culture. But um, honestly we've got thirteen studios worldwide. Uh, we try to give them as much creative control as possible and just help support them through the game looks really stuff. good. Kind of what we've been trying to do here the last uh, dozen years or so with worldwide studios. I think right now, certainly in the PS4 era, you're seeing a lot of that coming into uh, coming into play right now. That's great to hear that. And uh, you know, I mean, speaking about making fans happy, I mean, there's, I think there's a question that I've been getting a whole lot, and it has to do with God of War. You know, right. it's a celebrated game that's sold extremely well. It has a, a huge legion of fans. And one of the things I wanted to mention was, you know, I get a lot of tweets mm -hmm. about New Game Plus. Right. You know, is this right. is this something that you and Santa Monica Studio are, are evaluating for God of War? You know, it's crazy. Uh, with the advent of social media, we've got we get a lot of real time feedback right. from the fans and the community, and we listen to that. And God knows my Twitter feed is, is filled up with a lot of stuff that <laughs> we can talk about here or not talk about at all. But it's all important. We take it all all seriously. And New Game Plus is something that came through really strong, really hard through that kind of feedback loop. And I'm happy to say today that the teams are working on it, and we should have some more updates on that. We'll put that through the blog, but it's going to happen. All right. Good. Definitely. Good. It's a little miraculous. It was a super casual way to announce something kind of big like that, but you yeah. know, let's get to it. Maybe, okay. I will find time to get you. You wanted to watch it. Okay, thank I want to confirm yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Kids still dressing up. Asleep. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much, John. And it's great to hear that you and, and the amazing team at Santa Monica Studio are making that happen. Hey, if we can create uh, functionality and features that allow people to spend more time in the world we build, that's by definition a good thing. Excellent. Fantastic. So, New Game Plus, that is confirmed. That's a good way to put it. To God of yeah. War. We'll have full details on PlayStation Blog shortly. We have a lot more to talk about, too. Yeah, and actually, Sean, I wanted to ask you about that. About a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, you did something a little bit out of the ordinary for our team, and you kind of came out and talked about the four main games mm -hmm. that we would be highlighting uh, tonight's PlayStation Showcase. I was wondering what the thought process was there. Well, you know, every year, we try to let the, the stories we have to tell design the experience we're going to create. And this year, we felt that um, what we really want to do is take people on a journey deep into the content, deep into the four big pillar games that we're working on right now, um, and get them to see a bit more
more about um, the stories you're trying to tell and, and the way it's going to be expressed and what they get out of it. It's a really wide range of, um, of uh, titles there, anything from um, The Last of Us 2, which you saw right now, through Death Stranding and, and, and Spider-Man and Ghost. So um, this year, I wanted people to know that don't come here expecting to have some big, flashy new idea come out or, or some big surprise come out. Come here and sit with us and walk with us as we get through to see the, uh, the background stories and the deep inside of the games we're working on. That's wonderful. And we do have a lot more coming from those Worldwide Studios games in the showcase mm -hmm. later tonight. Do you have uh, any personal games that you are most excited about? Well, they're all fabulous, and I think the teams are really crushing it right across the board. But one thing I would say is uh, there's one of the games that we're having out today that will be playable in three months. And available in stores, yeah, and that's yeah. our favorite web slinger, of course, Spider-Man. So we're going to see a lot of that tonight, and I think uh, the folks at home should be happy with what they're going to get. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Sean, thank you so much for dropping by. Always a pleasure to trade notes with the chairman of Worldwide Studios. Great to see you guys. I'll head back to the pneumatic tube station. Though. All yeah. right, please do. All right. And wear the helmet. <laughs> we do have a lot more in store coming up in just a few minutes as the E3 showcase continues. But in the meantime, we also have some other updates for you while we wait during this short intermission. So I say we kick it off with a look at the latest from the world of Call of Duty. Mm. Oh cool, there are bullets in this one. It's 2018, which makes it uh, about time for us to really start being honest with ourselves about the fact that this franchise has gotten really stale. <laughs> That they're giving something to people who paid money for PlayStation Plus. That's new. We got to share five really cool announcements last week. We did our countdown, kind of ramping up for tonight's big showcase. Mm -hmm. That's right. We had the countdown to E3, and that was five game reveals and updates over a span of five days. A lot of great stuff announced. Let's take a quick look back at the highlights. Sorry about that. Phone going off here.
Okay, that looks pretty cool. I don't think I'm quite edgy enough for it, but... Welcome back. We're just a few minutes away from the E3 PlayStation Showcase. I mean, when I say a few minutes, I mean we're really good. <laughs> so let's keep moving here. There's a lot of great stuff here. Oh, and we can see the crowd is seated. Uh, the people are about ready to go. This show's about to continue, about to, to move into the big event. Yeah, it was great to see the countdown stuff, but I do think that there's like maybe one more thing we can sneak in there before we cut away to the showcase. Yeah! Yeah, let's, let's squeeze it in. Let's <laughs> squeeze, it, squeeze in. it in. Okay, so this next franchise boasts a huge loyal community of nearly six billion hours. Incredible stat. Yeah, they play that so much. A lot. They do. <laughs> and uh, we're going to take a, a first look at the next chapter right now. Look at Destiny 2 Ooh. Forsaken is coming out September 4th on PS4. A lot of great enhancements and content for that one. And uh, yeah, it looks it looks really good. There's a lot of buzz about that damn The mode guy looked like Doctor Doom. Doom. That was pretty cool. Not too bad. But Not I, too bad. there's barely any time because we're about to get to the showcase. That's right. We are really seconds away when it comes down to it from the rest of uh, PlayStation's E3 showcase. Thank you so much for watching. We've got a lot more in store tonight. Uh, sure hope there are no more intermissions, because that's a weird and bad bad. thing to have. Should we get to it? I think Lockheed is waiting. Let's get to it. We have so much more to cover. Okay. Uh, Got a lot more in store. So let's check it out live right now.
I feel like it's kind of an intimate undertaking in this type of setting to expect people to be you know, quiet while one person performs on a stage that big for an event that is not a concert with a crowd that size. I mean, it was good. It was good. It's good. I feel like, I, I don't know, did I miss a lot of the press about this game? Every time I see something with this aesthetic, I'm just hoping it's a new way of the samurai game, to be honest, but... This looks really good. Already. Where's the monk? The bastard beat me to him. 
Now they're torturing him at the temple. Come on. You think the monk's a hero? We need him, Pascal. Can you imagine just standing there talking to your boy and then having your life just ended like that? Just get This looks so freaking good. I would not even heard about this. Oh, it's a sucker punch game. Well, no wonder. <laughs> I did say Infamous would likely be the last PlayStation game I bought if they did another one, but I could swap that out for another Sucker Punch game, easy.
individuals. You think he's probably deeper. So, the Ghost is a definite for me. Control looks good. Um, Last of Us 2, <sighs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the fence about it. It's, it's a game I'd, I'd like to get around to, but I only ever watched the, the first one. I only, I've only played it about halfway through. What's this? It doesn't look like... This is the part of the Spider-Man game where you play as Ant-Man. Oh, is this Resident Evil? That's not Chris's blood. You never trust a kid in a horror survival. They said they weren't going to have any big reveals. These guys. Is the webhead's turn yet? Bruce, 
co-creator of Rick and Morty. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Fat Stuff Guy, and we're here at E3 to take a look at this new game I'm going to show you right now. Kroger Save the Universe. Let's give it a look. Looks pretty funny. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Donald, Donald Duck, and Goofy are are one hundred percent jarring every time I see them with this anime boy. <laughs> of the Caribbean. Have they done that before? Oh cool, it's Skull and Bones again. What was it? Something... I get that the goal, whole goal here is to get another song stuck in my head, but I'm not gonna let it happen. Oh, are they able to do all of them in one big collection? They sure are. What's that, like a thousand dollars? If I ever get like six months to a year where I'm just not working or anything, 
I'll buy that and and put myself through all of Kingdom Hearts. Oh God! Here we go. Death Stranding. I wonder what life's like for the person who started, like, first started giving this man a hard time. It's gonna be pretty embarrassing when, like, you try to knock somebody like this down and they go and do their own thing and already everybody, you can't get enough of it. Nope, nope. I could have gone the rest of my life without that.
What is this man on? <laughs> it's probably like the most, like the second most disturbing like game reveal I've ever seen. Next to like Agony. See it? Why are there no even locked windows being shown here? Is this is this Ninja Guy? Wait, what's it's Koei Tecmo. Team Ninja. Oh, neat. Oh, oh, okay. So this must be Spider-Man then.
Pete is that dude, man. Always looking out. Guys look like a bunch of regular dudes. I thought the raft was for powered people. See if this were the uh, the old 2001 Spider-Man game, all you'd have to do is uh, drop down and do that thing where he encases himself in web and then explodes. Wonder if he's gonna have any special guest heroes show up in this game. That was one of my favorite parts of Web of Shadows. Some like Luke Cage and um, and Wolverine showed up. See, they were going for um, something closer to the movie look for Vulture.
Who's showing up to help? Is that a rat? I'm not gonna get one of those. Just one more thing before we go. <laughs> that was the PlayStation E3 showcase. Cool. A lot to take. So we wrapped up. So I'm gonna close this out now. Um, not gonna lie. Okay, for a presentation about five games that had already been announced. Stuff that we already knew was coming. That was pretty awesome. Um, I think that it was a real quality over quantity approach. Um, yeah, I mentioned previously that I thought Xbox knocked it out of the park. But there were numerous times throughout where they would showcase a game. And I'd be like, okay, I don't really care about this. Uh, or this is the same thing we see every year. Or, you know, that sort of thing. Like a Forza game. Like, why do we still need time to talk about what Forza is? Um... But I think this presentation overall kind of focused a little bit more on the aspects that make these games uh, really, really awesome. Um, particularly, Ghosts was out of the park, like an incredible, really like realistic looking, you know, very uh, fantastic art direction. Not something you often see uh, for games centered in that type of setting. Uh, you know, usually you see stuff along the lines of like Samurai Warriors and Goku Basara, Way of the Samurai. Um, Samurai Showdown, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's got a lot more of that anime aesthetic where this is, like, very realistic, very grounded in its visuals, not necessarily in its choreography. Um, combat looks smooth, the environments look incredible. Death Stranding, uh, I, I mean, the toenail scene really messed me up, but everything else was, like, uh, you know, really cool. It's nice to finally see some gameplay, see some... Uh, you know, walking around within this this large, uh, constructed, horrifying universe. Um, Last of Us 2, I think, exceeded expectations. Kind of took the crafting components uh, to the next level. Um, funny enough, I think the only game that kind of left me feeling a little bit disappointed uh, was Spider-Man. I've been big into Spider-Man games since I was a kid. I think that they were some of the best superhero games ever made. In fact, a lot of the things that I find good about Infamous, which is one of my favorite game series of all time, I like it because it reminds me of uh, Spider-Man games in a lot of ways. Uh, and to see this one, there's just something about it that is not resonating with me in the same way. I don't know if it's that it seems to be pursuing a lot more of a linear direction which i don't think really suits a spider-man game um it's it's hard to describe but whatever it is it is kind of making me less than excited for that game i mean like i said in my predictions video the ideal scenario is me being proven wrong i would love for it to be a great game it's just right now it doesn't look like anything that i'd be going out of my way to pick up um control looked really good resident evil looked fantastic um, Neo 2, not really much that we saw, uh, but, uh, you know, it seems as though PlayStation's pretty cemented in the direction it wants to pursue, and with this, you know, they said the next kind of two years being the last of what they're pursuing for the PlayStation 4, or at least that's kind of, uh, what we're looking at timeline-wise right now, 
I think it's good that we're focusing in on kind of taking uh, these last, you know, years that we have with this console and really pushing some high quality exclusive content that likely is going to have an impact on the longevity of their future, you know, consoles. Um, of course, it's all contingent on what I was saying earlier about the viability of consoles in this sort of iterative technology market. Um, but that's something that we can only really see play out as we continue to watch. Um, but I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm about to close out now. Um, tomorrow, we'll be doing the final stream, uh, which will be for Nintendo's uh, E3 Nintendo Direct. Um, they said already that they're going to be focusing a lot on Smash Bros. It's going to be super, super hype. Um, I'm going to go over predictions and things for that tomorrow, uh, 15 minutes before that stream. So that'll be 11.45 a.m. is when I'll be uh, getting set up for that. So... In the meantime, thank you all for tuning in. It's another solid press conference from Sony. Um, and I'm excited to see what Nintendo's going to bring tomorrow. But thank you all again and come back soon for more from the game room.